I have received a message from His Excellency the Governor-General recommending, in accordance with Section 56 of the Constitution, an appropriation for the purposes of the Appropriation Bill No. 1 of 2022-2023, and I call the Treasurer. I present the Appropriation Bill No. 1 2022-23 and the explanatory memorandum. A bill for an act to appropriate money out of the Consolidated Revenue Fund for the ordinary annual services of the government and for related purposes. The Treasurer. Mr Speaker, I move that this bill be now read a second time. Tonight, as we gather, war rages in Europe. The global pandemic is not over. Devastating floods have battered our communities. We live in uncertain times. The last two years have been tough for our country. There have been setbacks along the way. But Australia remains resilient. Australia remains strong. We have overcome the biggest economic shock since the Great Depression. Our recovery leads the world. Faster and stronger than the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, Canada and Japan. Mr Speaker, those opposite said the biggest test for our government would be what happens to jobs. Tonight I confirm to the House unemployment is at 4% the equal lowest in 48 years. Yeah. There are now nearly 2 million Australians more in work today than when we came to government. More women in work than ever before. Yeah. And this budget will see unemployment go even lower, delivering more jobs and higher wages. This is not luck. Our economic plan is working. JobKeeper saved 700,000 jobs. HomeBuilder helped more than 100,000 people into a home. Taxes are lower for more than 11 million Australians and 3.6 million small businesses and sole traders. Our AAA credit rating has been maintained. Mr Speaker, this is our record. Mr Speaker, a strong economy means a stronger budget. And this is what we deliver tonight. The largest and fastest improvement to the budget bottom line in over 70 years. Yeah. By the end of the forward estimates, the budget is $100 billion better off compared to last year. More people in work and fewer on welfare. Repairing the budget without increasing taxes. The deficit for 22-23 is expected to be $78 billion or 3.4 per cent of GDP. Over the next three years, this will more than halve to 1.6 per cent. Net debt as a share of our economy will peak at 33.1 per cent at the 30th of June 2026, significantly lower than what was forecast last year. We have drawn clear lines, banking the dividend of a stronger economy, ending economy-wide emergency support. When we did so, those opposite were quick to criticise. When Labor starts spending, they simply don't stop. 
and the result is higher taxes and higher interest rates. Only the coalition can responsibly manage the budget and strengthen our nation's finances. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, our thoughts tonight are with those who have lost loved ones, homes and businesses in the catastrophic floods across New South Wales and South East Queensland. Nothing I say can overcome the personal pain and loss so many Australians have felt. We will stand with these communities and help them rebuild. Already over one million disaster payments have been made. Total support to families, farmers, small businesses, local governments and their communities is expected to exceed $6 billion. It will deliver hope, work and the prospect of returning to a better life. Mr Speaker, tonight we look to the future, realistic about the growing threats we face, ambitious for our country and our children, optimistic about what can be achieved. As we emerge from the pandemic, we are building an even stronger, more secure and confident Australia, where aspiration and enterprise are encouraged and rewarded, where families have greater flexibility and choice, where those in need get a helping hand, where greater self-reliance leaves our nation less vulnerable to threats, where our modern competitive industries create new jobs, where Australia and our allies protect the national interest. This is our vision for Australia, and this is what tonight's budget delivers. Cost of living relief now, a long-term economic plan that creates more jobs, record investments in essential services, stronger defence and national security, a plan for the times. Mr Speaker, events abroad are pushing up the cost of living at home. Higher fuel, food and shipping costs are increasing inflation and stretching household budgets. Tonight, the Morrison government announces a new temporary targeted and responsible cost of living package to ease these pressures. Practical measures that will make a difference. Fuel excise will be cut in half. For the next six months, Australians will save 22 cents a litre every time they fill up. A family with two cars who fill up once a week could save $30 a week or around $700 over the next six months. Whether you're dropping the kids at school, driving to and from work, visiting family and friends, it will cost less. This cut in fuel excise, which takes effect from midnight tonight, will flow through to the Bowser over the next two weeks. The competition watchdog will monitor retailers to make sure that these sa savings are passed on in full. This temporary reduction in fuel excise will not come at the cost to road funding which will see more than $12 billion spent in the coming year. Yeah. Mr Speaker, tonight I also announce a new one-off $420 cost of living tax offset for more than 10 million low and middle income earners. Yeah. Individuals already receiving the low and middle income tax offset will now receive up to $1,500 and couples up to $3,000 from the 1st of July this year. This measure comes on top of the $40 billion in tax relief already provided by our government since the start of the pandemic. Under the coalition, taxes for hard-working Australians 
will always be lower. Mr Speaker, tonight I also announce a new one-off $250 cost of living payment delivered within weeks to 6 million Australians. Pensioners, carers, veterans, job seekers, eligible self-funded retirees and concession card holders will benefit. Together with in existing indexation arrangements, this will see a single pensioner receive more than $500 in additional support over the next six months, just when they needed it most. Mr Speaker, to provide further cost of living relief tonight, I also announce greater access to medicines for 2.4 million Australians. For many Australians, incurring these costs is not negotiable. Australians will need fewer scripts before they are eligible for free or further discounted medicines. This budget's new cost of living package is responsible and targeted, delivering cheaper fuel, cheaper medicines and putting more money into the pockets of hard-working Australians. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, tonight we write a new chapter in Australia's economic story with a plan that backs Australians, their enterprise and their aspirations. Mr Speaker, Australia's unemployment rate is heading towards a 50-year low. We have a historic opportunity to get young Australians into skilled, secured and well-paid jobs. The dignity of work is important to all Australians. During this pandemic, we have already invested $13 billion in skills and training. With a record 220,000 Australians now in a trade apprenticeship, the highest level since records began back in 1963. Tonight we go further with a $2.8 billion investment to increase the take-up and completion rate for apprentices, providing $5,000 payments to new apprentices and up to $15,000 in wage subsidies for employers who take them on. Mr Speaker, in this budget, we also lay the foundations for national skills reform with a $3.7 billion investment, supporting an additional 800,000 training places, ensuring businesses get the skilled workers they need. Tonight, we also fund new and expanded programs to help find employment for disadvantaged youth, Indigenous Australians the mature aged and Australians with a disability. Skilling Australians is part of our plan for a stronger future. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, small and family businesses are at the heart of our economy and our local communities. They employ nearly 8 million Australians. The government has backed small businesses with the lowest tax rates in 50 years and record investment incentives. Tonight we go further, rewarding small businesses that invest in skills and new technology. No one knows better than a small business owner what skills they need in their employees. Starting tonight, for every $100 a small business spends on training their employees, they will get a $120 tax deduction, yeah. helping them become more productive and competitive. In this budget, we're also backing small businesses that are embracing the digital revolution. From tonight, Every hundred dollars these small businesses spend on digital economy technologies like cloud computing, e-invoicing, cyber security and web design, 
they will get a $120 tax deduction. Yeah. Investments of up to $100,000 per year will be supported by this new measure. Mr Speaker, lower taxes for small business is part of our plan for a stronger future. Mr Speaker, COVID and events in Ukraine have been a powerful reminder that we must increase our self-reliance. Australia has a world-class manufacturing sector. Tonight we announce new funding to solve for vulnerabilities in our supply chains. New funding to make Victoria the first place in the Southern Hemisphere to manufacture mRNA vaccines. New funding to drive collaboration between our universities, CSIRO and industry to rapidly commercialise new technologies in clean energy, medical supplies, defence and other high priority areas. And a new patent box for the agriculture and low emissions technology sectors. This will see income from new patents developed in Australia taxed at almost half the rate that applies to large companies. A, more, a modern, resilient manufacturing sector is part of our plan for a stronger future. Mr Speaker, our regions will always be an economic powerhouse generating prosperity for our nation. Yeah, yeah. No government has invested more in our regions than this Liberal National Coalition. Yeah. And tonight we go further, announcing an unprecedented regional investment package that includes transformational investments in agriculture, infrastructure and energy, in the Hunter, the Pilbara, the Northern Territory and North and Central Queensland. These long-term investments will unlock new economic frontiers and grow our national economy. Mr Speaker, our regional package also includes major new investments in water projects, a new regional accelerator, telecommunications and health, a new $7.4 billion investment in more dams and water projects to improve vital water security and expand irrigation. Yeah. A new $2 billion regional accelerator program to invest in skills, education infrastructure, export market development and supply chain resilience for our regions. A new $1.3 billion telecommunications package to expand mobile coverage across 8,000 kilometres of regional transport routes. Yeah more training places for doctors at regional universities, yeah. better access to MRI machines, mental health services and childcare centres across regional and remote Australia. Yeah. Stronger regions will always be part of the Coalition's plan for a stronger future. Yeah. Mr Speaker, our record $120 billion infrastructure pipeline has already completed over 35,000 projects across the country since we came to government. Nation-building projects like the Melbourne to Brisbane Inland Rail, the new Western Sydney International Airport and Snowy 2.0 are well underway. Tonight's budget includes new commitments to road and rail projects. Brisbane to Sunshine Coast faster rail, Sydney to Newcastle, faster rail. The Metronet project in Western Australia. The North-South Corridor in South Australia. Great Eastern Drive in Tasmania. Central Australian tourism roads in the Northern Territory. Melbourne intermodal terminals to increase the efficiency of the national freight network. More than $500 million is in this budget for local councils to deliver priority projects and $880 million to better connect regional Australia with ports, airports 
and other transport hubs. Delivering our record infrastructure pipeline is a vital plan for a stronger future. Mr Speaker, Australia is on the pathway to net zero emissions by 2050 and playing its part in responding to the critical global challenge of climate change. Technology, not taxes, will get us there. Yeah, yeah. Already, Australia has the highest uptake of rooftop solar in the world, and we're investing in clean hydrogen, carbon capture and storage, batteries and large-scale solar. Tonight, we make further investments in microgrids to support regional and remote communities that don't otherwise have access to the grid with small-scale renewable energy projects like solar and wind. A low emissions future with reliable and affordable power is critical to our plan for a stronger economy. Mm -hmm. Mr Speaker, a strong economy enables us to guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on. Yeah. Our government has delivered record funding for schools, for hospitals, Medicare, mental health, aged care, women's safety and disability support. Funding for our health system has increased every year under our government and is now at a record high. <laughs> Medicare is guaranteed. Bulk billing rates are at a record high. We have approved more than 2,800 new or amended listings on the PBS. That is nearly one every day. Tonight, I announce the listing of Trevelvi for a rare form of breast cancer, saving patients up to $80,000 per treatment. For the first time, this drug gives hope to many young women, extending their life expectancy and providing an opportunity to spend precious time with their loved ones. Like Alison, a young mum who, when she got her terminal prognosis, wrote a letter to her daughter, Matilda, to open on her 12th birthday when Alison would no longer be there. Because of Trevelvi, Alison will tomorrow celebrate Matilda's 12th birthday. Yeah. And both Alison and Matilda are both in the chamber with us tonight. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we also continue to invest in keeping Australians safe from the pandemic. With vaccines, testing and treatment and more PPE to boost the national stockpile ahead of winter. Mr Speaker, as we all in this chamber know, mental illness can be completely debilitating for patients and their families. Too many young Australians are living lives of quiet desperation. Last year's budget saw a landmark $2.3 billion investment in mental health and suicide prevention. And tonight we build on that commitment. In this budget, more, there are more headspace services, community-based treatment centres and digital mental health support. Combating suicide is a national priority and no government has invested more in mental health services. Mm -hmm. Mr Speaker, one in four women are subject to domestic violence. And tragically, every 11 days, an Australian woman loses her life at the hands of her current or former partner. In last year's budget, we committed $1.1 billion for prevention, early intervention, response and recovery programs. 
And tonight we go further with a new $1.3 billion package to end violence against women and children. More frontline services, emergency accommodation and support to access legal and health services for women and children in need. This budget also includes a substantial new women's health package, stillbirth and miscarriage support, the establishment of new endometriosis clinics, greater access to breast and cervical cancer screenings, all of which are in tonight's budget. Mr Speaker, employment is critical to economic security. Under the coalition, female workforce participation is at a record high and female unemployment is at its lowest level since 1974. Yeah. But there is more to do. And tonight I announce significant changes to enhance paid parental leave. Families, not governments, are best placed to decide what works for them. Yeah. We will expand the eligibility and provide working families with full flexibility and greater choice. More families will be able to access 20 weeks of leave and decide how they share it. For the first time, single parents will now be able to access the full 20 weeks. The 180,000 new parents who access paid parental leave each year will benefit from these changes. This budget, with more than $2 billion of measures to improve the safety, health and economic security of women, is part of our plan for a stronger future. Mr Speaker, when we came to government, federal funding for disability support was half of what it is today. The NDIS has changed the lives of 500,000 Australians and their families. In this budget, NDIS funding grows in every year, and under the coalition, the NDIS will always be fully funded. Yeah. Mr Speaker, since we came to government, funding for aged care has doubled. In last year's budget, I outlined a new five-year $17.7 billion plan for the sector, with new home care packages respite services, training places, retention bonuses and infrastructure upgrades. Under this plan, 40,000 home care packages, 34,000 additional training places, 7,000 new personal care workers and 8,400 respite services will be rolled out this calendar year. This budget provides more than $340 million in new funding to embed pharmacy services within residential aged care facilities to improve medical medication management for the elderly. Mm -hmm. Mr Speaker, home ownership is fundamental to the coalition. Mm -hmm. Home Builder, the First Home Super Saver Scheme yeah. and the Home Guarantee Scheme have helped make the dream of home ownership a reality. Over the last year, 160,000 Australians have purchased their first home. And tonight we go further, more than doubling the Home Guarantee Scheme to 50,000 places per year, helping more single parents to buy a home with a deposit as low as 2 per cent, helping more first home buyers buy a home with a deposit as low as 5 per cent. And in this budget, we're also increasing our support for affordable housing by $2 billion through the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation. Helping more Australians to own a home is part of our plan for a stronger future. Yeah. Mr Speaker, our government will provide more than $180 billion in education funding over the next four years. Record funding for preschools, record funding for schools, more than 30,000 new places at universities last year, and in tonight's budget we continue to invest in these critical areas, 
new regional scholarship programs to support students from lower socio-economic families and new funding for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander student boarding program. Mr Speaker, our government is safeguarding Australia's unique environment for future generations. For thousands of years, our First Nations people have cared for country. Tonight, we are investing a further $636 million to expand the Indigenous Rangers program with more than 1,000 new rangers to undertake land and sea management. Yeah, yeah. An additional $1 billion in world-leading marine science to protect the Great Barrier Reef. More than $800 million to enhance our scientific capability in the Antarctic, funding vital research and environmental management. More than $170 million for threatened species and habitat restoration, including for our koalas. And we're also continuing to invest in ways to reduce waste through our Recycling Modernisation Fund, saving 10 million tonnes of recyclables from landfill every year by 2030. No longer are we exporting waste. We are recycling it here at home and creating 10,000 jobs in the process. Yeah. Mr Speaker, our economic plan can only be achieved if our nation is strong and secure. Our veterans have given so much in the service of our country. Our nation owes them eternal gratitude. In this budget, we provide further funding to support home care services for 37,000 veterans and their families, as well as extending other programs supporting the well-being and the mental health of our veterans. Mm -hmm. The lesson of history is that weakness invites aggression. It leaves nations vulnerable to coercion. This is the reality we must confront. The world is less stable and we must invest more in the defence of our nation. This is what we are doing after those opposite allowed defence spending to fall to its lowest level since 1938. We have put in place a 10-year defence capability plan worth more than $270 billion, supporting more than 100,000 jobs. Yeah. Hobart-class air warfare destroyers built in South Australia, now in the water. Yeah. Combat vehicles maintained in Queensland, now in service. Yeah. And the F-35 Joint Strike Fighters with parts made in Western Sydney, now in the air. Yeah. And in this budget, we continue to make record investments in our Navy, in our Army and in our Air Force, expanding the size of our defence workforce at a cost of $38 billion, deepening strategic partnerships through agreements such as AUKUS and the Quad. And tonight, I announce a new $9.9 billion 10-year investment in Australia's offensive and defensive cyber capabilities. Yeah. This is the biggest ever investment in Australia's cyber capabilities, creating 1,900 jobs, more data analysts, computer programmers and software engineers to boost our capacity to prevent and respond to cyber threats. Keeping Australians safe is part of our plan for a stronger future. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, over the last three years, Australians have been tested. Drought, floods, fires and a global pandemic for which there was no playbook. Despite the challenges, our economic recovery is leading the world. Yeah, yeah. This is not a time to change course. Yeah. This is a time to stick to our plan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A plan that delivers cost of living relief now. Mm -hmm. A plan that creates jobs for the long term. Yeah. A plan that guarantees the essential services. 
and a plan that invests more in the defence of our nation. Yeah. Mr Speaker, three years ago we said to the Australian people that under the coalition the economy would be stronger and we delivered. Yeah. That under the coalition more people would be in work and we delivered. Yeah. That under the coalition taxes would be lower and we delivered. Yeah. That under the coalition essential services would be guaranteed and we delivered. Yeah. And that under the coalition we would invest more in national security and we delivered. Yeah. This is a time to stick to our plan. A plan for a stronger economy and a stronger future we will deliver. The debate must now be adjourned. The Leader of the Opposition. Thanks, Mr Speaker. I move that the debate be adjourned. The question is that the resumption of the debate be made in order of the day for the next sitting. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it.